Hey everyone, it's Joe and Isaiah from The Automator, and uh, in this video, we're going to talk about a misconception about auto hockey. A lot of people think auto hockey is really kind of cool and fun, a little toy, but it's buggy. And uh, it's one of the things Isaiah and I talk about, we're like, you know, 99% of the time, it's not auto hockey, it's the developer, you know, is what it boils <laughs> down to. The code that they just wrote, yeah, that's yeah. right. As the phrase goes, it's a poor musician that blames the instrument. <laughs> so we're going to talk about curious. some of the the main we have i think seven bullets that we're going to talk about of how it often happens and why something breaks and why it's not working correctly so let's jump into it here one of the biggest things is it's it's one of the the biggest pluses of auto hotkey is it's so easy to learn we have a ton of people always picking it up and playing with it right yeah. that of course means the vast majority of the scripts that you find out there and the people use are developed by beginners and usually what happens is that they just started out they don't they write something very quickly and when you try it in your computer yeah it doesn't work well they didn't think about your computer is what's going on they made it in a way that works really uh, as a very quick you know demo of what can be done but then you as a developer and person who is playing with that hotkey you have to take into account many things um for it to work for you so <laughs> that's one of the main issues if a person who just started with our hotkey makes a script you can be sure that there's a lot of things that they didn't take into consideration yeah so i'm going to go out of order here because number three that we have on our list is that things were basically developed for their system, not multiple systems, not different OSs, not different environments, um, which is what Isaiah is saying here as well. Is they they got something to work for them, which is which is all fine and good. Don't get me yeah. wrong, but it isn't planned to like what version of what bitness are you using, what version of hockey are you using, what libraries are built on, what other programs do you have? There's so many other things that you you really should take into account. Um, and again, we're not knocking that that's what people do because they want to get something done, right? But it is one of the things that will happen a lot when you use online scripts. Right. And and what happens is that then you cannot sh simply just blame the language. Oh, auto hot key <laughs> right. is the fault. Right. It's not really auto hot key the problem at that point. It might be that the script was not developed with those little details in mind that when it you used it on your end, uh, you know, it just caused something that was not previously thought. Yeah, which which leads to the next one is there's a there's a lot of different ways to automate with auto hotkey. And I have a video, I'm gonna put the URL over my head here. I'm just mm -hmm. finding it right now. Um, but it, you know, I have one that, that covers 17 different ways to automate with auto hotkey. Yep. The vast majority of people that work in auto hockey, they probably know two or three. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Like, and usually not, those are the most unreliable ones. Which, right. <laughs> which is right. Which is exactly what I was going to say was they're sending keystrokes or, you know, image or, or coordinates and mouse clicks. And, and those just really are not robust. They right. can be if you keep it on your system and you don't move monitors and you don't have different resolutions and everything. There, they can be okay. And every once in a while, we fall back to those when we have to. Right. But it's never our go to. No, and, and basically they could be reliable, but then you have to control for the whole environment. Okay, so I need the program that I'm going to click to be on a specific size so that every time I click, it doesn't matter in which computer, as I set the size myself, it will always be in the location that I'm expecting. But most of the people that create the script don't do that. They just simply send the clicks. <laughs> and as soon as you move that script to a different monitor, different DPI, um, a lot of things go into it. And the click that you were expecting to be in one place ends up in another place, right? Yeah. Now, the next one, I'll actually even poke fun at myself with, with something you just said, Isaiah. There's, uh, hey, when scripts are developed for free or for maybe donations, people don't put a lot of work into it, right? And someone wrote me the other day to report a bug on my window snipping tool. And it was basically, it's the D DPI issue that you just mentioned, right? And I'm like, I, I, I'm aware of it, but it's a free tool that I wrote years ago. And, and you know, I'm not going to go back and spend 20 hours to fix this thing. Like, yeah, because a, that's the other issue that sometimes you know, the issues, that, yeah, the issues that they find, they seem simple enough. But as soon as you try to dive into them, like this is really complex when you're dealing with DPI settings and stuff like, okay. <laughs> so the phrase is, you know, you get what you pay for, right? And if you're not paying the developer to develop more code and paying them incrementally as they're going for work, this is also why we stopped entirely bidding projects also it just it was too hard and too unreliable because 
the little quirks would come in there and we're like, look, you know, I, I hate going back and I have to say, now we, hey, we need some more money. We need some more money. And this way we just charge by the hour and then we don't have to worry about it. Yeah. And, and, and here's the interesting thing. As AutoHotkey Key is a free tool, 99% of the, to the, the, the scripts that you might find, for example, in the forum, it's just free stuff that they just put out there. Some of them, they put it and never look back. Um, uh, for example, Scan, which is a very prolific developer that makes very interesting functions. He created a function, I don't know, 10 years ago, 12 years ago. He put it up there. He never updated that code. We found a little bug recently. We had to fix it ourselves because I'm not going to go and say, hey, Scan, can you fix this for me? Like he has many other things to do. So I was like, no, let's try to fix it on our own. And that's what is expected when you go to the forum, find the script. Hey, it doesn't work for you. It's not out of hot key that is buggy. It's that just that he didn't take that into account, then try to fix it yourself. That's what is going to happen most of the times. Yeah, because it, it, it's also I want to say nearly impossible to predict all the different com you know commonalities. I mean, you imagine like a tool like Excel, how many hours go into development on a tool like that that's got to run on basically any PC. That that's why, right? Like it, it, it takes a ton of time. That's the reason why they charge you for it. <laughs> Excel. You right. must pay right. for Excel because yeah, they need to hire developers for that twenty four seven kind of. So yeah. So the, the next one is the vast majority of people that work out a hotkey, they just kind of pick it up as they go and they don't try to study and they don't try to learn. Maybe they look at the forum a little, but they don't know there's courses, right? So like we have, and I know there's a couple other courses out there, but we have, is it seven courses I think right now on yes. auto hotkey? Um, and they walk you through one of my you know favorite things to say with it. It's not that like most of our same content in one way or another is in our YouTube videos. But they're not structured. They're not with a clear path. They're also not like well, three to five minute videos. About it, right? Yeah, a lot of them. You know, they're, they're they're you'd have to really have to dig, right? And this gives you a nice structure to go through them. And there's also Jack Dunning's books that you could buy, and 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 he has a couple of free books as well. But the point is, you know, people for the most part don't actually study to learn it. They're yeah. picking things up as they as they have to, which is more like how I program. <laughs> well, this is the thing. I, I I am amazed by the type of libraries and programs that some people have created. And when you ask them, okay, are you a programmer? No, I have never programmed in my life. And you're like, what? You have never even studied that? Like, yeah. So it is great that Auto Hotkey is simple enough that allows many people to create amazing stuff. But at the same time, it means that they're not taking into consideration a lot of things that me as a developer, which I also didn't study this, but I, I actually dig deeper. I, by experience, have noticed, oh, God, there's a lot of things that you miss, must consider just before sending that click. <laughs> so, yeah, that's that's uh, something that that that. It's difficult to predict when you go online. And that's exactly the reason why we created a community. Um, I think the Auto Hockey Heroes is just for people to join, ask questions. We could take a look at what they're doing. And we all get to learn in a kind of controlled environment because it's not like you're going to test and see what happens. Somebody with a little bit more experience can chime in and say, hey, don't go that route because as soon as you go that way, you know, you're going to spend a lot of, I don't know how many times I've said like, you know, APIs, you know, web APIs, we have said like, that's a nightmare. Every time somebody asks about, oh, I'm going to get this data. <laughs> it's very complex. Yeah. Well, it, it's, it, and, and in honesty, it's not overly complex. There's just a lot of other stuff you need to know when you dive into it, right? It's yeah. not just a simple thing. Yeah. But yeah, um, having a group, and that's what I put over me here, that we, we have a group of people who we meet regularly, but we also have a live Telegram group where when people get stuck on something, they can post a question there. And either as ASI or one of the other hero members chime in on here's how I've tackled that, right? Yeah. And that nudge in the right direction just saves a ton of time, especially yeah. like you said, some people might go down a route where, hey, this this approach is kind of working and, and then they keep digging and digging and try, trying to use keystrokes or something, right? Or mouse yeah. clicks. And you're like, oh, dude, uh, I, you know, they're using Excel. And you're like, calm is available. Use calm. Yeah. Like, just yeah. No, I actually, a very good example of this is last time, on the the last hero, Thomas, one of the hero members, and Ryan, I think, they both were working on th something that was not right. working at all. And they spent 
a long time and they couldn't figure it out. And then they came and asked, and I said in five seconds, okay, you have a space right there that doesn't let you. And they were like, no way. And then I said like, yeah, I have run into that before. Just by having somebody that has done that before can save so much time. Which is one of the other things I was going to say earlier about the whole learning and, and you know trial and error. Hey, having a degree in a given topic, it, it does add some credibility, right? But having someone who spent a lot of time, you know, working in something and, and a lot of time basically implies a lot of made, they made a lot of errors. And the only way you learn this stuff is when you screw up, right? When you've yeah. painfully done a mistake and gone on the route, then you, you remember, right? Like that's how you really learn. And yeah. that's what we, we, we know. Cause we've been down those rabbit holes and been like, Oh my God, I can save you so much time. Don't, don't even bother with this other approach. It's just not going to work. And then this is the, exactly the point. In the end, it's not really the language's fault. The no. language is just a set of instructions that you can use and make um, in a specific order to get a result. Most of the commands up to this point work very reliably. So if something is not working, it's probably an assumption that you're making or something that you don't know about. And as soon as you have a group of people who have gone through the process that you're doing, they can point you and say, hey, no, that's that's not what you have to do. You save a ton of time. <laughs> no. no, yeah, absolutely. And then the, the last one we have on our list here is just that, you know, most people when they're developing the stuff, if they do it like I always did was I'm in a hurry, I need to get something done. I don't build a bunch of testing. I don't do a lot of robust, you know, things to it because I didn't, it worked for me and I need to get my work done. And so I stop, right? And when you find someone who's got that and then you go to use it, there's just not a, it, it hasn't been thought through thoroughly and tested and, you know, really built in a way to be robust. That is correct. And um, I am diving uh, a little bit more into test-driven development of creating assumptions first and then code and those kind of things. And I am loving it, but most people don't have the time to do that. They just write a script it works, let's go. And then later on, they find out, oh, it doesn't work in this particular instance. And then another instance and another thing. And they spend way more time fixing bugs that actually <laughs> creating the program itself. So yeah, um, I think, again, if they took a little bit of time uh, to know what their requirements and assumptions are, there wouldn't be the, as many bugs uh, as people point out, oh, auto hotkey is buggy. Well, not really. If they had done the testing before, like it wouldn't have that many bugs because it's their code that is having the issue itself. So. Yeah, I put the, uh, the URL over my head here for testing. If you want to go watch our video where Zayas talks through, I think we've done a couple now, but one in particular where we were showing the general approach. Uh, it does yeah. take more time up front. However, um, as you're adding to your library and as you're doing stuff, it can save you a ton of time, especially because things change later. And then you don't go back every time and retest what you've quote unquote solved at the beginning, but something else changed. And now that breaks and you don't realize it's failing. And that's where you waste a lot of time. This yeah. can flag it immediately. So it, it's really helpful. That is correct. Anyway, so thanks for watching. Um, if you learned something here or just give it some thought about it. if you agree, auto hockey, you know, isn't buggy. Awesome. If you don't agree, Right in the notes yeah. here, right? Um, like, wh why do you think? Because, yeah, yeah we, we did find very interesting stuff with the send command. Remember that yeah, we were dealing with this? That. Yeah, we had this this interesting situation with the send command. Some other people have complained about the send command before. So, yeah, it's true that well, sometimes there might be a bug or something. Well, however, like in that example, I didn't. I, I thought about it that I didn't bring it up because from what, what Lexicos has been commenting, it has more to do with the program's responding to the send command than it does with the send command, right? That is correct. So yeah. in the end, we are thinking that that is the case, but um, the fact that it's so unreliable in so many instances, yeah. uh, we, people are thinking, hey, there is a bug there. Well, we, we both know like site, the site version I'm using hasn't changed in forever. And right. I never had problems with it before. And now I'm having some. So there still could be some other things that change in Windows that would cause this, but um, that program I know hasn't changed. 
Uh, but and so the question is: Is it really you know? Is it really the language itself that has the bug, or whether it is the actually the environment, as we have been discussing, the code, the right. environment? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's some weird stuff. So anyway, thanks everyone for watching. Uh, like the video if if you learned something. We appreciate it. Bye.